Hey guys. Today is going to be a bit of a different video than I usually do. I've done a couple of them on my channel, but I don't think any that have been like this. I'm just giving the incense a moment to catch an ember. Helps bring me a little bit of clarity and clear mind. So, much in the way that I did the video on shadow work, I wanted to talk about some things that I've been seeing and feeling and experiencing with regards to this community both on Twitter and on YouTube and everywhere in between, social media in general. And, you know, it's one of those things I've been, I've said a few times, I've been reading the, some Nora Roberts books over again, and something that I read in the Circle Trilogy, I think I'm on the second book, was that times of difficulty bring out either the best in people or the worst in people. And lately, I've been seeing, I've been feeling extremely overwhelmed and have been less active on social media I've even been struggling to record videos and all of that kind of stuff because a, a community that I felt so welcome and having an escape from my real world issues <laughs> um, that brought me peace, that brought me comfort to see that you know, there were people supporting one another, and granted, there still are. Um, lately, I've been seeing, especially since this pandemic started, people have been changing and turning into people. Not necessarily people that they're not, because I'm of the mindset that everybody has good and bad within them, and as I've said before, it is, I believe it's an old Native American saying that within each person there is a white wolf and a black wolf, and whichever wolf wins is the one you choose to feed. And lately, it seems lately that more and more people are feeding the wolf that isn't necessarily the nicer of the two. And I'm not going to assign a color to that because either color <laughs> is capable of good or bad. It doesn't matter. Um, much like in the yin-yang. Within the toxic realm, there's always good. Within the good, there's always some aspect of toxicity. And it's something that even I have done on occasion. And lately, between my own shadow work and between everything that I'm seeing online, I've, you know, caught my own moments of where I was a little bit hypocritical and didn't... Um, maintain who I am in certain situations. And with regards to that, I've always been of the mindset that no one is perfect. No one is infallible. No one is without fault. We all make mistakes and it's okay to say, hey, 
I wasn't necessarily the best person in this moment and I screwed up and even if nobody called me out on it or said hey you're acting a little bit hypocritical from what you usually say or what you usually do or how you usually act I'm calling myself out on it and that's okay I have in the collab I did with Wicker Mama some time ago and I will link it somewhere up here if you haven't watched it please do because it very much ties into what I'm saying in this video you know lately all I've been seeing online which has made it very hard to be present online in any way make shape or form is toxicity and the people who would normally be more vocal and the people who would normally stand up and say hey <laughs> can we knock it off because this isn't necessary they like me were just all tired it's exhausting and it's wearing down all of our mental health, all of our spirits and everything and I think that's partially why I wasn't even able to record a video and release it this past Friday is I've been dealing with a lot of my own mental health issues which I've been very vocal about on my channel. And the places that I used to go to find relief or have a break from anything that was triggering or causing issues with my mental health have now only been further exacerbating it. And those places can range from YouTubers, it can range from different communities that I follow on social media, and I, like many, just can't take it anymore. And the past few days especially, I've really been sitting and evaluating did I want to continue with YouTube? Did I want to continue with this platform and everything of that nature? And I do, and I'm going to keep going with it. So don't think that this is me saying, you know, I'm walking away. I'm not doing anything anymore. I am going to continue with it. But... I feel the need to use my platform in such a way to bring a voice to people and the voice to things that <clears throat> may be being observed but not called out lately. And I know this may lose me subscribers, but hell, I'm tiny anyway and I've been losing them back left and right anyway especially with every video that I upload because there's been something going on in YouTube's algorithm and I know it's not just me it's everyone it seems like every time we upload a video suddenly we're losing subscribers even before they could have even had the chance to watch the video you know what I mean so it's not even like that video triggered something that they felt, you know what, I don't really want to watch this channel or be subscribed to this channel anymore. I've had people who were regular subscribers suddenly find that they were randomly unsubscribed from my channel. And I know I'm not the only YouTuber who has experienced this and has had subscribers say that. So, there is something going on with YouTube's algorithm, even if they may not be aware of it or know where it is right now they're saying there's nothing wrong but 
you know, if it was one person, yeah, maybe it would just be that one person, but it's several of us experiencing the same thing, so... Um, I may during this time only post four videos a week or something to try to give people more time to watch the content I'm putting out, especially where I do longer videos and I don't edit right now because I cannot get the videos off my phone to my computer in order to edit. If anybody is just tuning in and wondering why I do all these long videos and I don't truncate them at all, yes, it. I do not really know how to edit right now, but I do have the laptop. I do have the software. I even invested money into intros and outros and all that kind of stuff so I could produce better quality content for you guys. But my phone is old. And even though I have tried many different ways of saving the videos to a cloud or something of that nature and trying to bring it down onto my computer, it's just not working. So I haven't been able to edit things. So this is why you have the longer videos. And um, I just think that maybe if I do four videos a week, for the time being, especially with everything going on in the world, it gives people three extra days to go through and take their time to watch the videos I'm putting up, especially because they're longer. But beyond that, I wanted to go back into what I was saying. And it's ironic that this card is the very first card I'm pulling out. When I first started this channel, I was all about creating and being creative and um, having a creative outlet and I'm very grateful that I still have that. And I like teaching people and bringing out educational content and I love talking with you guys and um, communicating with you in the various platforms and getting feedback, all that kind of stuff. But what a lot of people that I've noticed have lost a sense of is that our platforms, be they Twitter, be they Twitch, YouTube, any forms of social media, regardless of what they are. We have the power within us to use them for good. We have the power and we can personally make the choice to say, you know what? I don't like this situation and I'm going to call it out for what it is. But I'm going to choose to do it in such a way that I am not be having more negative impact than I am good. And using your platform to create a more positive presence won't just help you, it will help everybody who's following you. With everything going on, we are seeing a lot more people being tempted to be led astray. And some people are falling into that temptation. They are um, allowing themselves to become more negative. And I've said it before and I'll say it again whenever there is any sort of wrong it is like the literal impression that I see every single time is villagers grabbing their pitchforks and their torches and going off to slay the beast 
And instead of it being an occasional thing now, it is literally becoming an everyday situation on social media. And it's causing a very toxic environment and it's causing a lot of harm to be done. And if you've noticed a lot more people who are these positive presences haven't been as present lately on Twitter, on YouTube, all those kinds of places because everyone the energy of everything is just exhausting. I've had a lot of people come to me and say that during this time they are noticing that their intuitive abilities, their empathic abilities and everything are waking up and becoming stronger. And if you are someone who is encountering that, I know that as an empath and one who's extremely strong with their abilities that you feel like a raw nerve and any slight negative impactful thing can just completely and totally drain you and wear you down to the point where depression and anxiety and all those kinds of things become exacerbated tenfold at minimum. Sometimes it's worse. And with people letting that temptation to just form this bandwagon of verbal and um, written assault on people, it's just gotten to the point where so many people are leaving the platform, not just on YouTube, on Twitter, all of them. Because it's like, I just can't take it anymore. These things that used to be a positive place or an escape from real world things are just magnifying them and making them worse. And I realize that many people aren't realizing the impact of what they're doing may be causing. Um, I realize that many people may be well-intentioned and just trying to help or trying to hold people accountable, and I get that. But there are ways that you can hold people accountable that don't make an entire community of people feel assaulted and like no matter what they do, they say how they may try to grow, how they may try to change or evolve, it's never enough. And that energy of no matter what you do, it's never good enough and you will never be good enough and the things that you are trying to do and the ways that you're trying to be are not good enough because You've made mistakes before, and because you made those mistakes, you're automatically an evil person for the rest of your life. That energy is so destructive. And it's not just putting stress on the people that are being focused on with that. It puts, puts a lot of stress on the people who are witnessing this and that outward stress is affecting mental health and in some cases when it gets bad enough it does impact and affect your physical health as well which I think is another reason why so many people are leaving these platforms and not really being as present because they're trying to keep 
themselves somewhat together mentally, emotionally, and also physically. And these toxic situations are wearing down all of them at a time when trying to keep your physical, mental health especially, and your emotional health is critical. Deception. There's a lot of people online in these situations who they may be intending to be have a certain impact but they don't see how their impact is truly being received and when I pulled this card I heard self-deception a lot of people especially with all of these times where we're not busy we're not rushing around like chickens with our heads cut off Without those distractions, a lot of people are seeing their intuitions and everything awaken. And they're not realizing that not only is there deception in the world <laughs> from the things we see in the media and the things that we hear and all that kind of stuff, but so many people spend so many so much time focused on other people they aren't recognizing or stopping to take a moment how they may be deceiving themselves that their sturgent need to hold somebody to task maybe because something within themselves is triggered by the situation and they themselves may have it all in their head that you know well this is necessary this is necessary and not recognizing what <clears throat> sorry about the background noise what may be underneath all of that that it's causing this extreme visceral reaction to happen in the first place So if that is something that may be potential and you're watching this video, please watch my video on shadow work because I guide you through that process of really taking a moment to stop and self-reflect. And I'll link that here too. Obsession. And this is another thing we're seeing it's not like it's calling out this person one time. People are becoming focused. And like every single thing is underneath a microscope and a magnifying glass. And they can't see anything else around them. They can't see anything else but this situation and how they are seeing it and their perception of it. <clears throat> They're not paying attention about what the cause and effect of having that and that focused attention and everything is also causing. I tend to be all about calling people out holding them accountable for their actions. I'm all for that. But there's a way you can go about it that is constructive and not destructive. When you are calling someone out, you want to bring their attention to the behavior that you're upset about. You are never going to get them to hear you and listen to you if you try to do that with an attack. 
Because the moment you go on the attack, they put their backs up and they will get defensive and they will not listen. They will not hear you. Now that also goes both ways. You can't keep lashing out at people repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly and expect them to change overnight when all you do is keep bringing up things from their past in order to keep punishing them for that. They are not going to be able to change unless you learn to forgive and let it Go. And I'm not saying that there aren't things that don't need to be held to task and um, things that aren't important. Of course there are. And of course they deserve to be addressed and looked at and called out. But there's a difference between bringing attention to it and being harassing with it. And a lot of the things that I'm seeing lately, it has crossed that line. And it's doing more harm than good, not just to the people that you are calling it out for, but the people who you are trying to call out. And you see how this goes light to dark? In behaving this way, and I've seen it before, this kind of behavior that I've been seeing going on really tears people apart. This incessant need to call somebody out, this incessant need to keep harping on them and harassing them and destructively obsessing over them and every single thing they say, every single thing they do to the point where nothing that they say or do is okay. that causes people to take their lives. I'm just going to say it outright. That kind of incessant, obsessive, harassing behavior causes people every single day to self-harm and take their own lives. I want you to try to take a moment to look at your own behavior. And if you are somebody who has been through that where people have been constantly harassing you, bullying you, verbally assaulting you, um, harassing you online no matter where you go, maybe even making up false allegations about you, all of that kind of stuff, and they just keep going on and going on and going on and going on, I want you to try to put yourself in that position of, if this were me and I were dealing with this, how would I feel? Stop. Take a breath. And self-reflect. Because you can call somebody out all you want, but they're never going to hear you unless you're being constructive. The harassment, the bullying, all that kind of stuff is only going to make it worse to the point where finally somebody is going to take their own life. And then everybody's going to be like, oh, well, I didn't know. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. I never saw how bad that this was affecting somebody. Everything seemed okay. Oh, they were such a great person because I've seen it a million times that the people that 
who are getting harassed and bullied and all of that kind of stuff, all of a sudden people see them with rose-colored glasses and all of a sudden they were these great people. Even the people who were harassing and bullying them. And that changed that moment of, oh my goodness, what did I do? Didn't come until it was too late. And there was no taking it back. We have seen it a number of times with people in the public eye. We've seen it a number of times with people who are not in the public eye. This is the cause and effect. And where more people are seeing it and more, where more people are being aware of it and they're just tired of it. They're tired of the constant vitriol, the constant toxicity, and it's never ending. And it's 24-7, 365, no matter when you queue up Twitter, or when you queue up YouTube or anything of that nature, there's a video there that is being disgusting to somebody. And at the end of the day, it's not really necessary to be that way. Yes, there are absolutely atrocious things and atrocious behaviors and atrocious actions that there are people who, who have done these things. But you get more accomplished by calling it out in a constructive way. Even watch my How to Communicate Effectively video. I'll link it here to make it easier to find. I go into all of this. Concealment. Because it causes these people to disappear. They keep everything within themselves. They try to bury it down. They try to pretend that they're okay. Just like with the deception one. They pretend that it doesn't bother them. They pretend that everything's fine and they're just focused on the positive things and everything. But you don't know what's going on in their heads. You don't know what's going on behind closed doors. You don't know what if your actions are causing somebody to self-harm. I want you to try to take a minute and think about that. This vitriolic behavior and toxic behavior that is going on that is not only killing these platforms but potentially causing real world harm as well. And that's something that a lot of people aren't realizing. And it's not just something that will necessarily impact the person that you're focusing on, but other people as well. With this mob mentality, more and more people are being seduced into well, you can no longer support that person. You have to come to our side now. So that only increases the impact of the harassment, the calling out, the negative impact grows larger and larger and larger to the point where the person that you're focusing on, that you're calling out, feels backed against a wall and into a corner like they have no way of getting out. There will be people who try to protect them. And then they get attacked as well. So it's not just affecting the person who's being held accountable, it affects the people 
who care about them and love them and are trying to say, hey guys, you're not doing something right here. This is going too far. And then they become the target as well. You see what I'm talking about? And then when they get targeted as well, those protections and those people who were trying to talk about it start to fall away because they feel like they no longer are allowed to have a voice. They feel that they are no longer allowed to speak up when they see something wrong, which leaves that person being targeted more vulnerable. But on top of that, it causes the people who are protecting them or trying to speak up for seeing something wrong more vulnerable as well. Because now they feel silenced and now the attacks aren't just at the person being called out, but at them too. So it spreads this cycle of toxicity and vitriol and impacts more and more and more people. They try to walk away. This is what I've been personally trying to do and I know I am not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. You try to be offline more. You try not to be present as much. Because every single time you open the app, all you see is this cacophony of negativity and this toxicity. You try to take breaks. You try to walk away from it. You try to refocus your attention on other things. But when you have things in your real world that are stressors and they're things that cause you harm or hurt you in any way, and now those outlets that you used to have that used to bring you some form of peace and relaxation and you see this community that used to be so loving and supportive of one another being torn to shreds. It breaks your heart. In no amount of Walking away and taking breaks helps because you carry it with you. And anytime you poke in to try to take a look around, it's just that much worse. And it's just that much more toxic and it's just that much more negative. And it really feels like no one will be happy until that primary target and anybody who speaks up for them is destroyed. It really is getting to that point. That deliverance of justice. That you won't be happy until you have persecuted somebody to the fullest extent and there is no more escape for them. Because you demand that they apologize. You demand atonement. And what makes it worse is when there are times where this person has apologized already. And it's never good enough. Their apology is never good enough. Even if they've changed their behavior, you still see people assaulting them verbally, online, all these kinds of things. Because no matter what, they cannot win. And like seduction, you see the cycle come back around where sometimes if this person has managed to survive through this process, people may start 
going back to supporting them. It goes back with cancel culture. It doesn't happen uh, many times, but it does happen on occasion where somebody is canceled to the point where they are gone permanently. But eventually the cancellation generally ends in some way. But you always have the people who deny it, that deny them that atonement, that deny them that forgiveness. Just like I said. That if people start to go back and favor these people, there will always be somebody who, and others who come forward and say, no, that person's a horrible, evil person and you're not allowed to follow them or support them because if you ever do anything in any way, make, shape, or form to support them, you co-sign any behavior that they have done in the past. Does that sound familiar? That's not constructive, that's destructive. And it's toxic. It impacts people's health, mental, physical, emotional, psychological. This shit makes people sick. This toxic, horrendous, behavior that I have been witnessing for some time and keeping my mouth shut about. This has a very damaging impact. Not just on the people that are being focused on, but on anybody else witnessing it. So I'm asking you, I'm asking anyone watching this to look at their own integrity. Be mindful and self-reflect on the things that you have said online, the things you've said in videos, the way you may have addressed other people, and I want you to take a minute and self-reflect on it. Right now, ego, pride, all that kind of stuff doesn't really matter. What matters is the impact of what you say and your character of who you are. Because if you allow yourselves to become and continue to be toxic, negative, destructive forces in these platforms, you are going to end up losing yourself and turning into people that you don't want to be. I've been witnessing it happening. This slow increase in this behavior and I've been slowly witnessing people becoming more and more and more toxic and losing themselves under the guise and deception self-deception of calling people out again you can call somebody out in a constructive way this ain't it this behavior I've been seeing, this behavior I've been witnessing, is not the way to do it. Y'all keep calling people out. Y'all keep going for the throat with things. Nobody is, nothing's ever going to change. Nothing's ever going to get better. And all that we're seeing happen is this visceral, toxic environment growing to the point where it's getting out of control and people are losing their 
integrity and their sen senses of self. They're losing the focus on what the primary goal was. Because now instead of it be being about the people who are being hurt, the people who are being impacted by this event or this situation, suddenly it blows up and becomes about things and people that it isn't about. Be careful with the things you see. Do your actual research. We see it all the time. The things that you see online are not 100% accurate. Lately, things have been getting really convincingly doctored from leaked DMs or videos and things of that nature where people are editing them to appear one way when they're not that way. You have to be careful with the things you put out. Because in the end, you may be the one who has to seek redemption and forgiveness for the things that you are doing. Especially if they go too far. And then it may be you on the receiving end of the things that you yourself are putting out. You know that karma thing? What you put out comes back to you? Generally threefold? Yeah, keep that in mind. No one is perfect. Everyone has skeletons in their closet. Everybody has things from their past that they aren't happy with. The things that they have done or said or ways that they have acted that have been less than stellar. And you don't want to end up being the person at the receiving end of the same freaking energy that you're putting out. If it's not in a positive or constructive way. Because all it does is keep breeding this cycle of destruction and this cycle of hate. And when I say that I know I'm not alone in this sentiment, I am not the only one who's just so damn tired and exhausted. I want you to stop and take a look around at the communities that you surround yourselves with and take a look and see how many good people aren't as active anymore. And ask yourself, why? Because it may just be you who's contributing to the toxic environment. So I'm sorry this video isn't exactly what I had planned on doing today. I'm sorry that this may not be my usual type of content, but every so often I just have to use my platform to speak up about things that are concerning or upsetting in the platforms that I'm present on. I have been up here for about three hours and spent the last hour just crying before I even started this because I see these communities that have been so beautiful, so welcoming, so kind, so supportive of one another. And I see them being turned into something that just makes me sad. And, you know, it's one of those things I've been personally keeping it quiet and to myself, and I know I'm not alone. And if no one ever speaks up, it never gets addressed and it never gets dealt with. 
So while I may be a small channel, and while I may largely be unseen, I'm hoping if even this one video, my one voice, <laughs> may reach out to somebody and help them self-reflect and take a moment to realize the cause and effect of their actions. Even if all I do is touch one person, it makes a difference. So before I conclude this video, I ask you to please do the same. If you see these types of situations that I've been talking about, try to use your presence and your voice in a positive way. Try to speak up. I know we're exhausted. I know we're tired. I know we keep seeing these situations over and over and over and over again. And it's just exhausting. And it's wearing us all down to the point where it's like a lot of us are just leaving. So I ask you please. When the world just feels like it's filled with darkness, when it just feels like it's filled with this visceral negativity and this visceral attack mob mentality, please, I know it's hard. Just try to be that one person to speak up and say something's wrong. Because if all you do is reach one person, it starts the process of making a change. So if you've sat through this video, if you've listened to me blather on for 50 minutes, I thank you. And please, until next time, I wish you the brightest of blessings. I wish you love, peace, kindness, generosity, prosperity, joy, good health, healing, and serenity. But most of all, blessed be.